Hello everybody, I'm Trevor May from Mayfly Audio, and today I want to introduce to you a whole new video series called Mayfly Inside. In this video series, I'm going to be showing you guys what it's like to run a startup pedal company. The underlying theme of all of this is how much I personally care about these devices and about making music, artistic expression, and giving you the tools to do that. Let's get to the first one. Surface mount versus through hole. So guitar players are interesting. We're always looking for better tone. Um, we change the strings on our guitar, we change the pickups on our guitar, we'll change the guitar, uh, we'll change the amp, we'll change the tubes inside the amp. We're always looking to make things a little better. What we choose for pedals is not immune to this. Now the question arises is, is there a difference in tone between a pedal made with through hole and a pedal made with surface mount? Now when I say through hole, what I mean is there are components with legs on them. You put the legs through the printed circuit board by hand and you solder them on the back by hand. So this is a handmade product. Now when I talk surface mount, what I mean is that there is a robotic pick and place machine that's placing components in the right spot and then the whole thing gets soldered all at once by rolling through a reflow oven. So is there a difference? Let's start by talking about components. One of the most important components on any pedal are the active components, transistors, diodes, and integrated circuits. Now, is there a difference between an uh, op amp, for example, that's in a through hole package and an op amp that's in a surface mount package? Fortunately, the answer to this question is easy. There is no difference. It's actually the same piece of silicon inside them. I can buy a TLO 72 op amp in through hole and the same op amp in surface mount, and it's actually the same chunk of silicon inside them. It's just the plastic covering that changes. Same is true with transistors, same is true with diodes. So if you're worried about a chip difference between surface mount and through hole, don't worry, there is no difference. Now capacitors are a different story entirely. So even in the through hole world, there are various types of capacitors and they can be very good for one particular application and really terrible for another one. Those types include electrolytic capacitors, ceramic capacitors, and film caps. And there's many types of film caps too. There's polyester, there's polystyrene, there's polypropylene. Each one of them is good for a particular task and not so good for others. For example, if I were going to design a filter circuit, I would use a film cap for those capacitive elements. But it wouldn't be very good for a decoupling capacitor and a power supply. For that, you'd rather use electrolytics. Now, surface mounts adds a new category of capacitors, something called a multi-layer ceramic capacitor. What that means is that you actually have a stack of a plate, a dielectric or insulating uh, material, and another plate all stacked on top of each other. Now, what you get out of that is a fairly large capacitance value in a pretty small package. And so that's pretty cool. Now, inside that category, there's different dielectrics, which is the name for the insulating material between the layers. Now, there's a dielectric material called COG. COG makes an almost ideal capacitor. They're great. They outperform even film capacitors. I love them. I use them all the time. But there's a problem. Those capacitors are only available in relatively small capacitance values. I think I've only ever seen them in maybe a thousand picofarads or so, so we're talking not a very big value. So you have to be careful when you design your circuit. If you wanna use a COG cap, you have to change the other component values around that capacitor to accommodate it. For example, if I'm designing a filter, I have to change the resistors and other elements in that filter design so that I can use a capacitance of a fairly small value, which enables me to use a COG cap. Now there's another dielectric used in these called 7XR. 
7XR gives you a capacitance that's amazingly big for the package size. You can get a couple of microfarads in a very small package, and that's amazing. But this comes with a cost. First is you've got something called equivalent series resistance, and the second is the capacitive value can change if you put a bias voltage on that capacitor. Now, equivalent series resistance is like having a little resistor in series with your capacitor. And with 7XR dielectrics, it can be a separate of 10 ohms. Now, if you're designing a filter with that little resistance in there, you've got to be aware that it's there. And frankly, for that application, it's a terrible choice. You shouldn't do it. The other problem with 7XR dielectric caps is that the capacitance value can drop very quickly if you put a little bit of bias voltage on it. Sometimes it doesn't take much. Sometimes it's like four volts and suddenly you've got a capacitor that's derated by 80%. Now, you can use 7XR capacitors in your design. You just have to be very careful and aware of what it's doing. For example, in the Mayfly open window, I've used them as coupling capacitors between the internal circuitry and the outside world. Now, I get away with this because there's no bias voltage on those capacitors because everything inside the chip is referenced to ground because I have a a dual power supply, plus nine volts and minus nine volts for the equivalent of 18. I know that that capacitance value is not going to degrade because there's no bias voltage applied to it. And so that works out very well. Now, if I'm using that capacitor for coupling at the output stage of the pedal, I don't care about the equivalent series resistance because I'm purposely adding some equivalent series resistance of my own just to keep that op amp stable. So in these applications, you can use it and get away with it but you gotta know how the capacitor behaves. Resistors are another thing. Resistors on surface mount can be very, very tiny. Sometimes you can get chip resistors that are so small, you can hardly even see them. So the problem with really small components like that is first off, they can't handle a lot of power. Um, if you try to put any amount of current through them, you could blow them up. So it's not a good choice to use them in circuits that require that. Now the second thing is that the smaller you make the package, the more noise you introduce into the circuit. And so if you want to make a circuit that's relatively noise free, you have to use the largest surface mount resistor package that will fit. And I use pretty big ones. No pun intended there. Now the next big difference between through hole and surface mount is how they're made. And this is, this is the elephant in the room right here. So a through hole device like this one, it's made by hand. There's a human being putting the components through the holes and soldering them on the backside. This is error prone. The original sketchy zebra, the one in the trapezoidal uh, enclosure. It's a great pedal, sounds wonderful, but it's very, very complex in the inside. Now each one of those first zebras are all handmade by me. But what I found is that if I was doing a big batch, my attention would wander and I'd accidentally put the wrong component in a particular slide. And then I discovered this later when I wouldn't work in final test. No one is immune to this. It's a manual process and it's error prone. Now that's not true with surface mount. Each one of these components on there, it's placed with a robotic pick and place machine that's guided by a computer, that's guided by a file saying, use this component in that place. Once that's done, it's all rolled through a reflow oven that actually solders everything all the same. There's no missed solder joints, there's no cold solder joints. If one of these comes out okay, every single one in that batch will be good. It's a very, very consistent method of manufacturing, much more so than through a hole. So now I'm thinking of a way to wrap up this video. And I think that it's safe to say that if you know what you're doing, and you take care and attention to detail, you can make a surface mount pedal sound as good or better because it's more consistent than one that's made of through hole. But it's the same with everything. 
you have to care about it. You have to care to understand the components. You have to care to understand the process. You have to care to understand the advantages and disadvantages of a particular component and a particular method of building things. It all comes from caring about what you're doing. And I care a lot. Peace out guys and thanks for watching.